TechnoSpark 20 Pro 4G. The phone na ito recently just got an upgrade to 12 plus 9 gigs of RAM and 256 gig of storage. And right now, it's currently being priced at 8,900 pesos. So right now, the phone ito has a big memory. And gusto ko share sa inyo ang experience ko with this phone after 30 days. Sulit bang 8,900 pesos mo dito? Malalaman natin after this quick intro. So alam naman natin ang design ni Tecno Spark 20 series is being inspired by the iPhone 15 series. And no doubt naman, flat na flat ang kanyang gilid and flat na flat ang kanyang likod. What I like dito sa likod niya is that matte finish siya so walang fingerprints. And kung pinansin mo ang kanyang mga camera ring, may gold na lining. So making it more premium. And what's important dito na bonus for me is that andyan pa ang audio jack dito so you can enjoy your music clipping using your wired headphones. Form factor niya is not bad and okay naman ang grip dito sa aking kamay. And I probably would give it a 8 over 10 sa kanyang design. And based on spec sheet, itong phone nito has a plastic back, plastic frames, and glass front finish. And meron din pala siyang IP53 na dust and water resistant. Just make sure na hindi mo idublog itong phone na ito. Now, the phone ito is being powered by the very, very popular MediaTek Helio G99. And it was able to give me a 416,000 points, which is, I think, very fair enough naman score niya para sa processor na yun. And if you further break it down, these are the score na dapat mong makuha. 99% stability with 351 loop score points dito sa Wildlife Extreme. Throttling test niya looks good. Eh, kita mo, all green naman siya. And it throttled to 95% na kaya maximum performance. And this is the score naman na kuha ko dito sa Geekbench. And and sa kanyang GPU na benchmarking. Now, itong phone na ito has a 5,000 mAh na battery which is quite the industry standard naman ang kanyang battery size. Not big, not small. Just the right size para sa mga smartphone these days. And it can support up to 33 watts na fast charging. And did you know the phone na ito can roughly last you for a day and a half without even charging? As long as you're using the phone normally, I think kaya-kaya naman na magtagal. And nung sinalang ko sa battery stress test ng PC Mark, it gave me a 13 hours and 41 minutes na screen on time based on 50% brightness and 60 hertz na screen refresh rate. And what I like naman dito sa kanya screen, it's big enough at 6.78 inch na IPS LCD. And what's nice dito sa kanya is that it has a 120Hz na screen refresh rate. Since naglalaba sa mga phone na may high refresh rate, pag bumabalik ka sa 60Hz na screen refresh rate, medyo mabibitin ka dalaga. Yung mata mo parang hindi makasunod kasi nasanay na ako sa 90Hz. Eh. Good thing na ito phone na ito can support up to 120Hz. So when you're browsing dito sa phone na ito, expect a good smooth experience dito. And when you're watching videos dito, expect good quality videos except that don't expect it to be performing like a AMOLED display. But if you want to enjoy watching videos together with the whole barcada, okay na okay tong screen niya. For me, at this price point, bonus tong phone na ito dahil meron siyang dalawang loudspeakers dito. Plus, meron pa siyang audio jack sa ilalim. So, gusto ko lang itry dito sa phone na ito. Isasagal lang natin ang kanyang volume. Pakinggan lang natin no, kung gano'ng kalakas ang kanyang 100% na volume using its loudspeakers. Well, I can say itong phone na ito is quite energetic and yung sound niya is quite rich. And yung lakas niya is quite loud enough for you to enjoy your movie tripping and playing games using this phone. Now, since pinag-usapan na natin yung gaming itong phone na ito, I did try two titles dito, Call of Duty Mobile and Farlight 84. Both setting them to their highest graphical settings na pwede and these are the best settings na pwede dito sa dalawang game na ito. Sa Call of Duty Mobile, the gameplay was okay. Now, itong game na when you're playing some VR matches, you'll feel some frame drops along the way. Hindi mo may wasan dahil G99 is not the best gaming processor for a mid-range phone. So, this one can game definitely, yes, but uh, pag sinagad-sagad mo siya, you would really feel some drawbacks and one of them is 
uh, mag-frame drop siya. Na ako medyo marami na kayo on a certain point. Nagtapo na kayo ng mga smoke bomb. Mapifeel mo na medyo maglalag siya na konti. And pagdating ng Safari 84, medyo mahirapan din siya when you're setting it to the maximum graphical settings. You need to lower it down a little bit to get a better gameplay. But do expect some frame drops along the way. And ang pinakamainit na na-achieve ko dito sa phone na ito is around mga 40 to 41 degrees Celsius based sa akin man si na thermal scanner. Now, for the past 30 days, I've taken a lot of shots using itong camera niya. It has a 108MP na main camera sensor together with a 0.08 na auxiliary lens. This one can shoot up to 2K and 30fps and ang kanyang harap is a 32MP na main camera sensor with a shooting capability of 1080 and 30. So, simulan natin ang ating camera analysis with the outdoor shot. So, looking at this picture, itong mga bato na ito, you'd see some really nice details dito. Though, I feel na medyo mas darker ang picture na ito, though medyo bright naman ang sunlight, but but I feel na medyo dark tong photo na na-capture natin dito. Though, the details are there. And itong picture na ito is not so bad at all. Though, I feel na para medyo a little bit lacking sa details on some of this. Uh, medyo na soften siya kunti as compared do sa kanina nakuha natin na picture. And look at this photo. It's a little pale. Not really that bright that I want. Now, but looking at this picture, you'd see a lot of details sa kanya alambre, sa kanya mga ugat, and of course sa mga veins. I think this picture is very decent. And taking some flower shot, I would say itong purple niya is a little bit enhanced and I love the way it is. As well as tong green na ito, you'd see na yung green na ito in actual is not as green as the photo that was captured dito. Medyo mas enhanced ang kanya pagka-green. Medyo may pagka-saturated ang green niya dito. Now, looking at itong shot na ito on outdoors, this is a normal shot and this is ang kanyang 3 times zoom na naka-preset. You'd see na yung kanyang color is almost consistent naman. Medyo dark and gloomy ang kanyang sky. And if you zoom it dito sa kanyang 3 times zoom, medyo hindi na ganun kalinaw ang picture na medyo grainy na siya. If you're looking for some indoor shot, I would say okay naman siya. Can perform under low light but medyo hirap lang siya kunti pang masyadong madilim na. Like this one. Na nung finocus ko siya dito sa bottle cap, I would say ay ganda ng pagka-focus niya dito at ang linaw ng kanyang pagka-capture dito. Now equally said naman dito, taking some uh, portrait shot, yung kanyang background blur isn't the best na nakuha ko on a phone at this price point. Taking a quick shot dito sa sandal na ito, okay naman siya but I would say na medyo a little bit soften ng kanyang details dito. And looking at the flower shot na ito, I would say not bad kahit i-zoom mo pa siya. Now, taking a look at some of this stargazer, okay naman mga details na dito sa gitna, sa kanyang core, pag zinumin mo siya. Equal said din dito sa carnation, once na zinumin mo, you'll see a lot of details din. Now, taking a quick shot dito sa ramen na ito, okay naman, decent naman kanyang shot. And taking some fruit shot, like itong banana na nakasabit, and itong mga lemon na nakadisplay, I would say okay naman kanyang mga color. Now, check in its front-facing camera, okay, I would say very decent, preserve na preserve ang mga imperfections sa akin mukha. As well as this shot, it looks really nice. And if you take it indoor, you see na medyo mas soften siya kunti. Dahil medyo hindi nagpe-perform masyado itong camera under low light sa kanyang front-facing camera. But on some places like this one na medyo maliwanag sa loob ng store, I would say this is a pretty decent shot. Now, using his front-facing camera to take some vlog, I would say na this is a shaky camera. And testing this one again, I would say na okay, uh, not the best camera that I've used at this price point for the front-facing camera. Using its rear camera, it's also shaky as well. Medyo nakakahilo no? watching this video. Though the resolution is not bad, but you might need a gimbal or tripod to make it stable. And testing another outdoor shot, it is really shaky and really making me dizzy. Now guys, after 30 days using the Tecno Spark 20 Pro 4G, ano masasabi ko sa kayo now? One is that this phone seems to me it's a bit better than the Redmi Note 13 Pro 4G having the same processor and this one I think gives me the better gameplay experience as compared to that phone. And two, ito phone ito is definitely more affordable than this one is being priced at 8900 Unlike other phones from other manufacturers that are charging higher, 10000 above for their G99 releases. And the best thing siguro na gusto ko dito sa phone na ito is that it has loud na stereo speakers and a big screen for my social media consumption. Overall, for me, ito phone na ito is great. After 30 days, it can hold up sa lahat ng tasks na binibigay ko sa kanya. Ikaw, tingin mo, okay kaya ang Tecno Spark 20 Pro 4G. Let me know in the comments and if you like this video, don't forget to share it to your friends and a subscription to my channel would definitely be awesome. I'll see you in the next one. And so, I'm para si Richmond and you're watching Gadget Psychic.
like and subscribe to my channel don't forget to hit that notification bell for one of my latest uploads click the dito and for one of my popular uploads click here